All right, we're on the air. I'd like to call to order the meeting for the, the Thursday, September 2nd planning board meeting. If everybody would please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Yeah. Um, so I would like to introduce our board members now. To my left, we have Jerry Grayville, <clears throat> Paul Amatucci, uh, Vice Chairman Mike LaRue. Allison, is your last name Hurley he's still? For a little bit, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Just got married last weekend or so. So I figured out. <laughs> <laughs> Phil Roy and Amber Fecto at home in her new house on Cranberry Meadow Road. Uh, we also have the current town planner, future town manager. James Bellissimo, and it looks like Jenny. Oh, she was she, Jenny's at the ball field. Um, she's our code enforcement officer. She's here as well. Uh, so after that, I would like to open the public comment session. Public comment session is open to anybody under the purview of the Berwick Planning Board. Um, if the only thing that we ask is that you do not make any comments or questions about anything that's an active item on our agendas. Seeing nobody come forward, I'm going to close the public comment session and move on to the approval of minutes from the August 19th, 2021 meeting. Did everybody have an opportunity to review the minutes? Yes. Yep. Any changes? No. no. Wow, James. Just when you started to get good at this. I know. <laughs> Finally. Three for three, and, and he's going to leave us. <laughs> um, so then I'm looking for a motion to approve the minutes. I'll move that we approve the minutes as written. Thank you. And a second. I'll second. All right. I've got a motion and a second. All in favor? All right. Looks like that passed through with flying colors. On to new business. The first item on the agenda for new business is the subdivision amendment, which is the creation of one lot on Cemetery Road, which is in the R2 zone. Like, who are we? Lou, yes. you're on. Um, if you would, so the, the microphone does does move and Bobby Joe would love it if you would walk around with it and we've got that in the right spot. So <clears throat> take it away. Is this, uh, they is would this, like you to keep your mask up, sure. please. Thank I you. I can do that. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Uh, Lou Chamberlain from Atar Engineering. And I'm representing Mr. Tim Doan tonight and he is here with me. Um, and we've submitted a subdivision <laughs> amendment application for the cemetery road subdivision, which is a 14 lot subdivision approved by the planning board back in 2005. Um, and the focus of our amendment is to take uh, lot 14, which was uh, an original lot in the subdivision and divide it into two lots. And the result would be a 15 lot subdivision um, that, that lot is about eight acres and we'd be creating a, uh, about a four and a half acre lot, calling it lot 14B and about a two and a half acre lot, calling it lot 14A. And so it's a simple division. There's, there's a couple nice building envelopes. There's test pits. There'll be uh, subsurface wastewater disposal systems for each home and plenty of room for wells. Um, the original lot, of the subdivision was eight acres about here. And there was a, there's a right of way across lot 13 of the original subdivision that provided access to that. And so what we're gonna do is, is utilize that. And we're gonna extend the right of way a couple hundred feet and provide an area for a turnaround for emergency vehicles and get frontage off of those, that extension of the right of way to enable the two lots. And so we've submitted a full application. There was a stormwater management plan done for the whole subdivision. And we've updated that. Basically, this, this lot was developed as part of the existing subdivision. This would be the lot added. And we're going to propose to treat stormwater with a wooded buffer. And it really doesn't have any impact on the stormwater. 
So if there's any questions, we would be glad to answer. Thank you. Is that right of way paved or is that a gravel right away? And what's the plan if it is gravel? It is going to be gravel, basically a shared driveway. Yep. Yep. Correct. Is there a reason why they didn't go for 15 lots when they originally had it approved? I think it had to do with permitting. Um, if, you know, 14 lots didn't require a state permit. 15 lots would have required a site law permit. Yeah. Um, and so they offered the 14 lots for sale. And once five years goes by, you can go for that additional lot. Right. And of course, we're approaching 15 Oh, yeah, years. You're, you're way so, beyond that, yep. But that was the reason they didn't. Copy that. Questions, Jerry? I have nothing at this point. I don't see um, the frontage on here because my copy is very small. Do you have a, or can you tell me what the road frontage is on these two <clears throat> lots? Because this right of way, it's hard to yep. see that it's providing enough frontage. So for, for lot 14B, yes. there's, a, there's a number of sections of the right of way that add up to about, I think it's about 230 feet where 150 is required. Okay. And it starts right here. There's 50 feet right here. And then there's 77 feet. And then there's another 67 along the curve, and then another 40 or so at the end of the, the old right away. So this this all this line right here all fronts on this lot. Okay. And then this one, of course, has this yellow line right there, and that's in excess. I mean, okay. So lot, I'm, yeah, I was. So the current survey does not include the the deeded right away. Am I correct in that assumption? The current survey. Um, so I'm, that in order for that lot near the top of the, to, to have the appropriate frontage, that deeded right away would have to be extended. That's correct? right. Okay. So is that going to be on a new survey or is that just something that? It, it's right on this plan. It is. Okay. Yeah. All right. Excellent. Yeah, it is on there. Okay. It's just, it was just hard to see at first. I, gotcha. I see it now. I see so it now. there was not enough on the original, the original plan for this when This was eight acres. The frontage was right there. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. That yeah. That's what makes sense. And that's yeah. what it looks like. And so gotcha. we're kind of. Yep. Mrs. Specto, any questions? I don't have any questions yet. No, I think I'm good. Mr. Bellissimo, what do you have to say to us? Anything? I I don't have anything to add. Um, I know the sub original subdividers here today. This is your subdivision, right, Mr. Hall? Are you, I, I'm just curious, are you here in support of the application or just here for, okay. Just sometimes with the original subdivider, they, they you know the ins and outs of it. So just curious, um, but good, good to hear. Good to see you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I have a question. Oh, what's the, uh, what additional impact is there on new abutters uh, with this? I, I don't believe are there there's any new abutters. There are really no additional impacts on abutters, I wouldn't think. Yeah. I mean, it's one one more lot. So, right. you know, the folks along Shelly Lane will have to, you know, look at a house behind there, but they built in the same subdivision. So, mm -hmm. um, do you, do you reason for us to do like a public hearing on this or anything? I think, I think so. I mean, I, I, I think it's good to notice the abutters and. Okay. It, it, it's follow, we follow the. It is, yeah, we follow the sub. Anyways. Yeah. Okay. Yep. That makes sense. That. What's that? We're, we're fine with that. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I think it'd be application complete tonight and then schedule the public hearing for the 16th. <sighs> <laughs> the 16th is going to be a bearish day here. So yeah. <laughs> just so you know, <laughs> I have another one for that night. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We've got, yeah. We're, I think we're going to have two or three public hearings that night. So it's going to be, and yeah. Okay. So um, on that note, any other questions from anybody? So I say that we, um, I look, I'm looking for a motion for application completedness. I'll make a motion to <laughs> approve for completeness. All right. Thank you. That. Thank you. Uh, so I have a motion and a second. All in favor? All right. We got everybody. Great. 
So we will continue on with this. We'll put you on for the 16th. Bring some popcorn that night, everybody. <laughs> and some water. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, guys. Yeah, you don't have to stay. You can go. So next on the agenda is a change of use. Um, medical marijuana storefront to medical medical marijuana dispensary, or is it just marijuana dispensary at three fifty seven Portland Street, which is Kind Farms? Yeah, it's changed from uh, medical marijuana storefront uh, to a medical marijuana dispensary. We, uh, actually, I should let Paul into the waiting room. Or yeah, the that would be nice. Licensing and allowance <laughs> of uh, way more. Oh, okay. A dispensary can do way more than a caregiver can. Uh, hey, Paul. How's it going? Paul, you're on mute. Of course he is. <laughs> I think we'd figure it out for two years. There we go. We are. I'm sorry, you guys. I'm, I'm not feeling very well. So, oh, uh, I'm sorry. That's okay. That's all I got. Hi, everyone. I hope everybody's doing well, staying safe. Thanks, Paul. Absolutely. I'm just going over it. I was just summarizing your application, realized you, you weren't in here. So oh, okay. I'll just pick yeah. back up. So the applicant stated it's, it's not going to change the day-to-day -day operations of the stores. Um, this would be a substitution of a use for another use. So there's no impact on the cap. Um, I just made a note that if you look at our land use table, the, the retail store and the dispensary on the, on the same row, uh, I think there's differences in, in scales uh, in terms of cultivation. But um, I think I, I, it's okay with... The chair turned it over to Paul to kind of explain Absolutely. why, what, what's the purpose of the, of the change? Yeah, I think that would be ideal. Hi guys. Um, well, this change of use is largely administrative and it, it's sort of a proactive move on our part. Uh, the state of Maine uh, in January of this year um, uh, alleviated the cap on official state dispensaries. Um, and the difference, but we're a caregiver storefront um, and there might be some upcoming changes to the medical laws. And so this is largely for our organizational structure and how we structured our company uh, because it has multiple owners and uh, a dispensary allows for multiple owners. And there's possibilities that uh, with the new medical laws uh, coming around, um, it'll be a sole proprietorship. And um, so it's really just largely administrative and structural in the way that our uh, company is set up, and it doesn't really change anything operational um, at all. That's kind of and it would I allow gather. us to open up a second store somewhere in the state if we found a, a place, um, you know, somewhere else. So, Paul, what you're saying is that functionally, there is no difference between what that store can do currently as a storefront uh, than it can do as a dispensary. Is there no difference in function whatsoever? Uh, that's correct. And on the retail level, there's absolutely no difference. We're still uh, under the same set of laws and uh, so nothing changes. So there's no uh, production or growing or anything in that facility, it's still no. just retail. Yeah, it's just retail. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Mr. LaRue, you, you always have good clarifiers for us. <laughs> um, now, it, this is just kind of like a on slightly off topic, but uh, is there going to be future ideas of uh, cultivation on that site? Like, because with a dispensary, you could have almost limit, unlimitless mm -hmm. size. So you would assume that you'd be building a bigger facility for cultivation compared Actually, to a caregiver. You're definitely right, Mike. Um, uh, it does allow for that. We're not planning on that. Uh, okay. We still have the building on the lot next door, which was 12-2, uh, uh, <clears throat> pardon me. And um, we're not planning on changing the size or the scale of that at all. Okay. Um, so for us, it's that is an additional thing. But for us, it's largely just administrative. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if it's the right venue, but the only the only question I would have is as, as the business has gained popularity and, and more traffic uh, on that, what I perceive to be a very busy thoroughfare. Uh, my only concern is as you increase your throughput of customers, uh, is there any future plan uh, for, for traffic management in that area? And does that lie on us or does that lie in an agreement right? with the 
DOT. business owner <laughs> slash DOT, where, where do we fit in on that? Because I, I perceive that it could become an issue because there is a lot more traffic in that area. So yeah. I just want to make sure that we are aware and planning for the, for the future on that. So we don't have, you know, more stuff that our resources, uh, you know, our limited resources yep. and public safety have to respond to. Yeah. That's all DOT out there, isn't it? Mm-hmm. On route four. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It is. Okay. So I remember you had to go through some, some extensive stuff just to get your driveway in <clears throat> properly and whatnot. Correct. Um, yeah. Correct. So, I mean, this seems pretty straightforward to me. What is the, how do we handle this James? Uh, I think for root, just to go back on route oh, four, yeah. I think there's all kinds of safety concerns there. And there I think, are. I think there we are. need to come up with maybe a, a, a citizen led vision process for route four it's a middle lane like middle it needs lanes. a middle turning lane so people can get yeah. into it and they turn added, they added the middle lane when the credit for the union bank put in right. the atm but right. now it needs to be extended yeah, down it does. because right. i live right across right. from kind farm yeah and i've seen two close calls my wife had to pull off the road the other <laughs> week because somebody almost hit her yeah so it's going to happen and it's going to happen soon so. Well, I mean, we've already had people killed, two people killed out there in the last that was just 10 years, road. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's a dangerous road. Yeah. Okay. But, just want to make sure it's, yep. we're, we're aware and planning yeah. for Yeah, that. we should put it to the front burner. Good thought. Uh, so for tonight, I think you find the application complete and improve it tonight. Okay. We don't need to, yeah, do anything. Yeah. All right. So I'm looking for um, a motion for the application complete for the change of use for the medical marijuana storefront to marijuana dispensary. I move that we find the application complete. And a second. I'll second. All right, I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Okay, that's, we got everybody. <clears throat> and then I am looking for a motion to approve the change of use from medical marijuana storefront to medical or to marijuana dispensary, 357 Portland Street, Kind Farms. Make a motion to approve. All right, so moved. Second. All right, I've got a motion and a second. Everybody in favor? All right, we've got everybody. Thank you very much. Right. Thanks, Paul. Hope you Thank feel you, better. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Yeah, thank you, you too. Thank you. Bye bye. Moving right along like we do. Next order of business is major subdivision. Uh, this is a sketch plan meeting. So, of a major subdivision, six lots, Diamond Hill Road, R3 zone. Just to remind everybody uh, for anything that's on our agenda, we cannot take any public comments. Major subdivisions have been a point of contention lately. So we cannot take any comments from the public until the actual public hearing for this uh, application. On that note. I'll just cover my couple of points. Yes, yeah, go ahead. Um, There's a waiver for river, waiver request for open space, number one. Uh, number two, this lot was historically used for wood ash, which can cause high levels of arsenic. Okay. There were, at one time it was studied uh, and there was high levels of arsenic found. At one, one point, DEP recommended as a solution was to bring in fill for the entire site. Since then, Ransom has done another study and, and they are suggesting that the arsenic is naturally occurring. My suggestion is to send DEP both their initial letter, send it to them and send in the ransom study and just have them send us back another recommendation. Have them just go, well, it looks to be good or, or really that I think it, this on public utility or private? No, this private would be wells, private well. So that's a, that's a pretty expensive mitigation uh, system yeah. for. But I'd be curious what the applicant thinks. Um, other than that, my recommendation would be if if um, everything's okay for a site walk, we schedule it for October 7th. Yeah, definitely. And we wouldn't be doing, I don't see a full application here anyway. So we would be. Would we have them in? I mean, we can't schedule a site walk or public hearing without uh, a sketch plan site walk. Sketch plan site walk. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, go ahead. Good evening, Steve Height with Civil Works. Um, the owner of the property is Mike Sitkowski. He's here as well. He purchased this from uh, Steve Brown a while ago. Location is at the top of uh, Diamond Hill. There were two lots, two conventional lots out front, and there's actually a right of way that goes between those two that accesses the 22 acres out back. 
Can you guys hear me? It is on. Should yeah. see a green light? Yeah. Um, so what uh, what this proposal? We've, we've been in talk with Jim before, James. Sorry, mm -hmm. and um, we've come. We we talked about the different aspects of of the subdivision. He had actually brought up the 2002 report that was done by Gillespie that identified some background uh, arsenic here. So immediately after that conversation, uh, Mike went out and had uh, Ransom do a, a totally independent study, trying to take a look at the same thing. And their conclusion based on the information that they have, and they did a more extensive review than was done in 2002, uh, as evidenced by a 455 page report. Um, and their conclusion was that this is arsenic background. It, it is above the, uh, the the recommended elevations, but it is background information, uh, background uh, levels. I have no problem. That's a good idea. Give, give it back to DOT. I'm sorry, DES and DP, and see if they have any questions on that. But in general, what we understand is that even from the state's perspective, you know, subdivision is allowable on on this as well, since it's single family. Um, there's no municipal services other, other than, you know, maybe just uh, coming by for garbage, but uh, cul-de-sac length uh, meets your requirements. Um, what we show right here is a conventional lot layout. So there's 22 acres, this would be six lots. So Mike would be looking to keep lot six, which would be about eight acres. And the rest of them would be combined in the five lots themselves. Uh, his idea being that he'd like to have more of a, a pastoral feeling for the subdivision because he's going to live there. So he's not trying to cram them all in there. So what uh, James had identified was, uh, we understand that each subdivision would like to have open space, um, which we don't disagree with at all, but with the oversized lots that we're looking at here being consistent with what's uh, out front right now, um, we're, we're asking, you know, would that be something the board would be, I'm sorry, if you guys can't see me, I apologize. <laughs> um, if the board would be amenable to a waiver in this case for a subdivision like this. Um, so I'd like to have that conversation tonight. If you guys have any input in regards to that, that would be Would good we to have know. to make a decision on a waiver grant tonight without having gone out to the property or anything? I mean, I don't have. No. A I, I, okay. I think well, you can reserve your right to. Huh? Hold on. I think you can reserve your right to hold yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would. I would. I'm yeah. not a big fan of granting waivers, but I'd like to see the property <laughs> yeah. before I. So I'm not asking for it. Yeah. I'm not asking for any for for you guys to vote on anything tonight. Yeah. Um, we brought that forth just so you guys have an idea of where we're going with that. I mean, there, there's ways to do this as well to show additional open space. Uh, but the idea was that that um, to try to keep it as wide open as possible. It is a mode field. Uh, it, it is what you see in this in here. This is all field. It has a fantastic view. Um, I'm sure you guys are all aware of Diamond Hill. We have so, like a full application packet. Like, you it's, have it? No, it's it's just it's the this is just sketch and, review. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. I just didn't know. Sometimes sketch they come in with everything. So well, we, we had that conversation. <laughs> and, and, and I'm like, I need stuff. Yeah, we, we knew for sure that we just <laughs> okay. want to have a conversation. We're not asking you guys to make yeah. any decisions yep. tonight so that we could have this conversation yeah. without any real, you know, right. put anyone on spot yeah, kind yeah. of thing. But um, you know, Mike is here, uh, young man, young family, couple of kids, definitely wants to move up here. Uh, he's a contractor as well. So a lot of the work he'd do himself in terms of he's electrician, electrical and electrical, correct? General contract. And general contracting as well. Um, so that, that's the idea. Take 22 acres, make six fairly large two acre plus lots and eight acre for, for him out back over here. Um, and that's the starting point. So any feedback you guys can give us at this point, sans a uh, site walk, um, would like to hear from you. Um, like I said, you do, you do know we had the uh, ransom do the report. Uh, so they redid that. Um, I think you do have, do they have the uh, executive summary in their packet? Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Just a question for the landowner. It, in the event, because it is a slippery slope when you grant waivers because it sets a precedent for future applicants. Yeah. Um, your, your large lot at the end, that's the one that you intend to keep. W would you be amenable to making some of that public space at, as a, condition of, of approval, would you be amenable to that? That way it, it would not require a waiver. Is that something you'd consider? I, I think I'd have to look at somewhat of a design to see what yeah. it is, because yeah. I don't know, depending on how it is, how yeah. the public would access it, but what they would use it. Yeah. Right. I right. mean, generally the public doesn't use it, but in this, do you live in Berwick right now? No okay. So in this town, we are real big on open space. Yeah. That is, I mean, open space, protecting wetlands and uh, and controlling the population in the schools are the three big hot buttons. So it's unlikely. I'm, I mean, I'm going to tell you, it's unlikely that I would vote to waive almost anything 
that I that I get waiver requests for, particularly hot button items. Um, but but we'll, we'll look at it when we're out there. I mean, the it just sets a precedent if we do it for. I know it's it's only one like one acre because it's five percent, it right? Yeah, it's only like it's, one. It's, acre. it's an acre to two yeah. acres. So. Yeah. Um, you just said something. It rang something in my brain. Yeah. You said something. It just went away. <laughs> I get that all the time. Don't oh, worry. Geez. <laughs> <laughs> oh, public access to the open space or is yeah. the open space for the subdivision? You can have the open space just for the subdivision. It doesn't have to have to be public okay. access, mm -hmm. right? right. Same, yeah, yeah, that, that, was, that was a point. It just has to be open. Yeah. I, Typically, yeah, it's, so it's, it's just, just for... Like, like we're not, we're never going to build on this. Yeah. Recreational. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think... If that's after the site walk, yeah. if that's where you guys want to go with it, I yeah. think there's opportunity to do that and still keep keep a you know fairly substantial subdivision. But when you guys go up there and take a look at it, see yeah. what see and that, what it, that wasn't task direction by any means. It's just a question to you know so, see see yeah. what you're amenable to. Honestly, my, my biggest thing with this is I'm coming from you know just north of Boston, where there's I got yeah. a five thousand square foot lot with my house on it. I'm looking to move to that space where we have all this space, where we have this, we have separation. Really Bobby cool. Joe's going to come out and yell at you because you're not talking into a microphone. <laughs> I'm just predicting. I could hear her in there moving around. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, so what I was saying was I, I came from a very small city-like area. Um, I'm over it. I want to move my family up here. You know, I want to develop my business further up here. I want big lots. I want space for my kids. I want the big lot. That's why I wasn't, we're trying to do everything by right. the setbacks, everything, not trying to jam 53 houses and 20 mm -hmm. acres. That's it's, good. It's not the intent at all. So you have no intentions on adding lots to this? No. I don't think he's got the frontage to do it anyway. Yeah, so I that's my next question is the minimum frontage is 300 feet, but on lot three and lot four, I see 240 feet for frontage. So with your with your rules for oh, the cul de sac, is it because it's yeah. on the cul de sac? Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah, thank you. And, and we we try to make it bigger than yeah. that minimum okay. as well. Okay, I, mean, I will make a note. It, you guys do abut a hundred acre parcel that's landlocked, so you have a potential for, you know, tapping in. It, I just make it to know right, that. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you know, if you come in, if you good, if, great for you if you come in and you get access to that that lot, but that's possible. Well, thanks. We'll take a look at that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's been on the market. It's yeah. Oh, um, I don't. I don't know if we've had a conversation with that, but I, I think right now the issue is is like you just said. I mean, from all the conversations I had with yeah. Eric, was I, I want a big piece of property. Yeah, yeah. Um, I want to talk real quickly about the uh, the reports themselves and what what DEP had um, um, had recommended or would be uh, remediation for arsenic and so forth. And then we actually did have a conversation with the ransom as well. To find out what type of uh, situation something like this with with um, background arsenic is actually how does that get remediated if it needs to at all so there were several conversations and and, and this is something that we'll we'll flesh out with dep as well as a house on it covers it a driveway covers on it and and if it's grassed and, and undeveloped that way it, it it actually is is considered fairly stable as well Another reason why having really large lots here for that, because that was not not that not Eric had ever, ever thought about more than six lots here, but keeping these fairly large and spreading everyone out was was also the idea of all right, minimizing that potential for, you know, we got 15 houses on, on a 25 acres or 22 acres, you're disturbing more area. Um, Cause he's gonna live here. I mean, this this is his house. So he's he's much more concerned about it than, than otherwise, but, um, the reality of, of and I think you said you're a realtor. Yeah. Yeah. So being having disclosing this to everyone is is paramount. And so this information, and James, we 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 actually didn't quite know about that at the very beginning because yeah. was you know he brought it up and says, "Oops, let's go take a look at it." Yeah. So we're trying to do as as much but as little as possible yeah. for what we're looking at. So um, that that's the extent of it. Um, if we can, if you guys want to go for a site walk, which I think you said you would, yeah. that'd be great. And then just we can have conversation relative to you know open space if it's if it's a deeded area. Um, then there's conversation too when you're talking about uh, open space for a subdivision. Are you guys more inclined to have like additional area around the outside or like a set aside? I think it has to be it has to be made up of doesn't have to be in a, it can't just be like, oh, this is like a little thing, right? It doesn't have to be like a clump of land and not wetlands. Um, I it, think we have it written out somewhere. There are standards. I mean, it, yeah. it could be. Yeah, we have. So, so the answer is don't do the perimeter. Don't do that. Just show, show do let's, something. Let's that, find, yeah, yeah, let's find yeah. the 5%, pop it on there um, and 
and make it happen. It has and to be okay. accessible from the right of way. Understood. Yeah. 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 All right. Even that, if that's, it's a footpath, I mean, it could yeah. be it could be a footpath, yeah. and it could be a, something that you keep mowed, and the kids can go out and play soccer. I mean, it's not like yep. you know, it doesn't have to be a thing. Honestly, but right? they are big on open space. Um, I have a question. So actually, uh, as far as real estate goes, I don't. You don't have to disclose if there's something in the soil. I mean, you should, but it's not a disclosure. But um, my concern would be with the, with the water, like wells. So, so yeah, because that is a disclosure, issue, and that's a that's a very expensive mitigation system. Yeah. So very good question because we actually had the exact same question yeah. when we found this out, and they went back and and th these uh, the houses out front over here they've had no. They've had nothing that that's indicated of any issues that's or good. special um, methodology for taking care of the water. Okay, that's good. So that that goes hand in hand, kind of with what Ransom was saying. This is like background um, arsenic, which, as it turns out, mm. that's Berwick. Yeah, in, it's in everywhere. Area. I mean, so, it is everywhere. We don't have a lot of. I mean, I haven't run into arsenic in our water here. We get a lot no. of iron in our water, but right. I haven't run into a lot of arsenic in the water. But so we so we are cognizant of that, okay. and we're trying to try to address that as well. So so when when I was when the indicating uh, uh, disclosure, yes, like what Eric had said, it was anyone who comes to buy a lot is going to know this. Yeah, that's this, right. this is not one of those things where gee, we're not no one knows about it. It's your so, be best uh, best bet. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's your best bet. To do yeah, that. so that that's that's it. We're, yep. that, that's as far as we want to go. All so right, cool. um, if you guys have anything, any other suggestions, questions at this point, or that that's it. Thank you guys. No, Have Hecto, you, you got anything? Is there, there's a, is there a cemetery on the lot, lot lines? Yes, there is. That might be a good spot for some of the open space. If you can figure. Well, out. it ha it has a natural buffer anyway, so you can't okay. do anything around it, oh, which okay. is actually incorporated into. You don't have to do it because it's 25 feet, but in, in this area here, so. Okay. It, it is there. Okay. And it, it's identified on. It would be identified on that lot as well. Mrs. Pecto, do you have any questions? I don't want to ignore you. No, right my now. only question is about the soil, but that's been addressed. So okay. I'm all set. I'm looking forward to the plate walk. Me too. Yeah, good. Mr. Amatucci. Yeah, my concern was as yours, the uh, the well water. Yep. And uh, that's that's got to be a hot button as well. Yep. Mr. Graybill. So. Good. Yeah. All right. So, LaRue, no? Yeah. Site walk October 2nd? 7th. 7th. At what time? Nice fall foliage walk. <laughs> it's going to start getting, well, it shouldn't be too bad. When's daylight savings time? When does that end? I have no idea. Anyone do it? Five. Tell me. Tell me a time. Five. It's five. Five. Right. five. All right. October 7th. Seven now is still light out. Yeah. So yeah. So it should be good at five. 5 p.m. on October 7th. We'll see you out there. And then. Um, so typically we would stake out the road, but. It, you can't misunderstand where this is because okay. this, this is a gravel road right here between these two houses and you're looking right at the lot. Okay. So, okay. Just stand wanna, out there and wave at us as we're me. all showing up. <laughs> yeah, um, so, but if you want me to stake it out, I, I will. It's just. Would you like that, James? I think any features that would help maybe stake out some of the, the lot setbacks. I mean, you don't have to stake out everything, but any features you think would help. To... I, it, it's, it's, Extremely self-evident. Okay, but okay. what I'll do is we'll, we'll we'll throw some stakes out the center line so it's, we know where we're standing. Okay, and that's you'll, good. you'll be able to see it's twenty-two acres, which which seems a lot lot smaller on a piece of paper than when you stand on there. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's pretty big. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, all right. Well, thank you. Appreciate thank it. You. Thank you. Thank you. You don't have to stay if you don't want. You can go. Oh, I do have yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I just you're 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 uh. Easel. Yeah, my easel. Got it. Thank, thank you. you. You're welcome. All right. Good night. Moving right along to the next sketch plan for the next major subdivision <coughs> in Berwick. Um, so this one is the seven multifamily units in an existing building at 170 Pine Hill Road, which is in the R1 and R2 zone. James? We have Neil, the um, civil engineer and art, the architect here. Um, this is the existing building at 170 Pine Hill Road. Uh, the plan includes some site improvements. The building will be sprinkled and the sprinklers will be reviewed by the state fire marshal. We have capacity letters from water and a note from a memo from fire. And I believe that the applicants have addressed the chief's uh, request. Um, I, I, there's some, there's been some yard, yard debris in the front yard. And I, 
I think we should look at it in the slate walk and I don't think we should act on the application until that's picked up and addressed. Okay. My, my opinion, that's probably more of, more of Jen's call, but it's been out there. Yeah. It's been cleaned up. It's come back. Um, but you know, that, that's, that's really up. To Is that your opinion, Jen, if you can hear us? I think she's frozen at the ball fields, but if that's, if that's what I can um, hear you. Oh, okay. There she is. Can you hear me? Yeah, absolutely. I agree with what James is saying. And there's a couple other things that um, as we go through the process that we're going to chime in on and discuss as you guys are going through the process of this application as well. Okay. Thank you. Um, so exactly is this? this is right before the Fox Ridge condos. Okay on the same side of the road immediately before it as you're headed out of town. Okay, and it's already a building. It's yeah, it's like a years. big blue siding building. Okay. Mm -hmm. And one thing we caught, um, one of the cover letters said that there are, two, there are seven two bedroom apartments. And then the, yes. I believe the proposal is for uh, seven three bedroom apartments. Yeah, so the, yeah, the July 26th letter right here says seven two bedroom apartments. So um, I'm, so these are the ones that were all sent to all of the, um, so the, it was sent to, let's see, so the water department had seven two bedroom apartments. Eldridge got that. Uh, sewer department, it says seven two bedroom apartments. Fire's fine. So it's just those two that it says seven two bedroom apartments. So we would want to see those amended and resent to reflect the correct number of bedrooms. Yeah, I think yeah, I think we can get those out and back to those guys uh, pretty quick. They usually respond they usually yeah. respond pretty yeah pretty promptly. So yep, thanks Neil. Yep. Um, not requesting any waivers. Thank God. Because <laughs> y'all know I don't like them. any other questions. If we're not going to act on this that we can send them back with um, before they come back for completed application. No, nope. it meets like the current land use, right? Yeah, yes. Yeah, there's nothing else. Yep. Uh, nope, I just... did have a question. Yes. And, and I think I know the answer, but uh, I'll ask anyway. Okay. Um, it's kind of an unusual situation where this had previously been approved, yeah. you know, 10, 12 years ago, and they started construction. Uh, resulting in the building where it is right. uh, being unfinished. Uh, we had approached the town to, uh, Jerry Leterts here, the owner, to help him get it um, resurrected. Right. And uh, it was at that time that uh, uh, Jennifer and James let us know that we had to come back to the planning board because too much time had passed. Yeah, yes, too much so time So given that we were, uh, we are trying to get it resurrected and trying to get things going. Uh, we were hoping that we could, uh, um, uh, approach this as an approval for an applica the application versus three meetings? Um, nope, because our code enforcement officer wants the lot cleaned up before we even approve the application. Okay. So I have to uh, I have to go with her. She's the expert. I have to answer to her. I think no matter, I mean, yeah. we might be looking at three meetings no matter what. Well, yeah, we've, no got, some, we we've got some big, yeah, we have got, we got a lot. We got some big meetings here. Well, the, the current- Can I interrupt? <laughs> Yes. Um, I encourage you, Art, is that, if that's Art that's standing at the podium yes. right now, you guys are kind of freezing a little bit. Um, I encourage you to bring in Jerry and let's do a pre-construction meeting as well as you're going through this process. Um, that way we don't have any questions that are unanswered after. We'll set up a time with you. The, the only issue I had, I, I do see that they're recommending a pressure booster pump for, for your water pressure. Um, and, and there's no mention of that with regard to the sprinkler system. Um, I, I'm just curious as it, as it specifically states on the third floor, um, is that one, is that pressure pump, is that something that is the responsibility of the municipality or the builder to, to, to get that pressure? Oh, that's a good question. They stumped, stumped me on that one. Where, okay. where is <laughs> so I'm on the page, uh, Berwick Water Department specifically is saying that they need, the pressure in that area is around 30 to 40 PSA, PSI. You may want to consider incorporating a booster pump to get decent pressure to the third floor. So if the issue is residential service, if we have too low of a pressure there, 
a few pages deeper, I see the Berwick Fire Department, you know, calling out the requirements for the sprinkler system. I just want to make sure we're, we're pushing enough PSI to supply that sprinkler system. But more importantly, does that fall on the town or does that fall on the on the developer? It, any, I mean, I would, it's a booster from from the water lines into their building. Yeah, so that's so it's probably okay. internal that's in to the building, building yeah. I'd imagine. It's in the building. I would, I would Im yeah. imagine this. And is that is that part of the plan? I haven't I haven't looked through this plan yet. Yeah, that that's my biggest question. I mean, <laughs> it, you know, yeah, it, minor inconvenience to the people who are living there, but more importantly, you know, the safety of our public servants that would have to respond. Is there sufficient PSI to supply the the, the sprinkler system? Would be my biggest concern. Um, one of the things we can do is check with the water department in terms of if they've done any pressure tests in that area recently as well. Okay, that would be excellent. And that, yeah. and that area actually is like the, the standpipes right there. I, so, I was going yeah, right to say the towers right there. Tower. They should have yeah. great. No, it's it's oh. the opposite because. The, oh, really? Because they don't get enough. Oh, uh, so that's yeah, If you don't have the head, you don't get the pressure. Yeah. I'm not an engineer. <laughs> I know I lived right below the water tower in North Berwick for 12 years. Oh, so you know. <laughs> um, yeah. So, and then this, did you say the state has, the state fire marshal has to review this anyway? Yeah. We, okay. So we'd make sure to follow up on Phil's inquiry right, at the right. state fire marshal. I mean, I, I imagine that's part of it, but we yeah. can make that, a, should make it a condition and make sure it gets, right. gets taken But the pump it. is town water department responsibility or the, be the owner. Owner. it's the owners yeah. okay all right all right yep. and if there is one i would imagine that we would maybe make a condition of the <laughs> just the maintenance of that because that's a kind of a big deal and yeah. something that could i just want to make sure the fire happen. marshal's happy i mean you, you yeah. know if you got low water pressure to supply residential you certainly have low water pressure to supply a sprinkler system yeah. for your the yearly yep okay good right i'm sure the system if it gets approved through the fire marshal's office they'll yeah. they'll have requirements for for testing and for minimum pressures as well so perfect okay thank you and then the the thing that i saw was the um with chief plant for the fire department about the um the turning radius for their aerial ladder trucks and since this is a three-story building but was that amended yep uh what, what we ended up having to do i'll, I'll pull up the screen here <laughs> So what we ended up having to do is uh, we had to pull this, uh, this drive here uh, down, towards, down towards the south of the lot uh, by about six feet uh, to accommodate this. And then we widened out, uh, widened out the opening uh, into the parking area uh, to, accommodate, to accommodate the truck. So we have, uh, we have, swing, we have swing out around the around the paved area and so the the truck uh, the truck makes it through there uh, to say that the you know the, the overhang and everything stays within the uh, within the pavement it doesn't it comes out over the you know, over the, the graded area but it's basically designed so it's it doesn't hit anything any of the uh, the light posts or the or the cars that come through and that so would it would, yep so it's sneak through there i, I did sit with uh with uh, De i mean, chief plant and and discussed and discuss how they get around and, and i think we were we were in agreement by the end of that and we just uh, we just basically just tweaked this entrance down to the south a little bit so it gives them a little more a uh, little more room up here to pull that truck around great thank you what's the size of this lot because this lot goes way back doesn't it yeah let me uh, and, go back and what to, is uh, back there well go back to the existing conditions plan here get you a little i actually had a buyer for this property and we went through that building um and I noticed that long driveway down the left-hand side. Yeah, yep. Yeah. What, what that is, that's a right-of-way. Uh, you see my screen up there okay? Yes. Okay, yep. so you see this, uh, there's a long right-of-way uh, to the La Pierre lot that's, that's kind of marooned in the middle of the lot here. Okay. Uh, but that's been, that's been in existence for, for years and years. Yeah. Uh, and that's, that's proposed to, to just remain as is. Uh, then, yeah, and then uh, look, the Latarte lot comes around and there's an open area uh, to the back here. And I know, James, if you wanted me to just start getting into the spiel about the about the development or not, or if you were what you development? Were, uh, just uh, what we're what we're proposing down here. Oh, oh, that's it seemed like, oh, it seemed okay. like he hadn't he seemed like he hadn't gotten through his uh, his description yet. So 
I didn't want to jump in early. Oh no, you can spiel. I'm spiel done. Away, I'm Neil. done. I spiel. Yeah, yeah. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, let's right. hear the Neil spiel. <laughs> spiel is better than mine. <laughs> All right. So uh, I'm Neil Raposo, civil consultant. <laughs> On behalf of Jerry Latart, um, and as uh, James indicated, this was an art indicated. This was a site that was previously approved back in 2008. Uh, was the last time it got town approval, and we're proposing to use the same structure um, as we discussed, and it will be the seven the seven three bedroom units so that'll be up, updated to the uh to the water and sewer uh, i did have discussions with them and they they didn't seem uh, too concerned about any of the any of the capacities but we'll get that on get that in writing for you guys um the the lot itself is is actually uh, quite a bit different as far as grade wise and some of our stormwater uh implementation that we have out here compared to the first uh, you know the first approved plan and that is due to you know some upgrades and changes in the DEP requirements uh, in case this ever, you know, any expansion ever happened out here and they wanted to get something that would trip that stormwater treatment, which is now it's a much lower standard, you know, lower threshold than it used to be. Uh, so we made sure that we had everything out here sized and, and designed to meet all the newest upgraded uh, stormwater BMP manual. Uh, we also uh, modified the parking compared to what we had approved prior. Uh, and that's just to incorporate um, some of the features that uh, that the architect has put into the building, as well as uh, an accessible route, uh, which was which was kind of hard to come by in the other building. It was it was done by you know a ramp at the front, which was tough to navigate. That's what we ended up doing is we uh, we created a an ADA ramp that's that's uh, at a slope such that it doesn't require the the handrails or or anything like that or the landings. Uh, it's a gentle slope coming up to the come to the front of the building now, so it'll it'll blend into the blend into the uh, you know the yard and the and the landscaping much better than uh, what we previously were going to have to do. It's going to be a big you know three sided ramp with a platform and a ramp to another platform to get up to that uh, to get up to that living floor here. Uh, but the way we've we've regraded the lot, we're able to sneak up into there and and keep that an ADA ramp without without any you know further obstruction in there. So it's uh, one of the one of the big things we were trying to do with it, um, it has uh, has the required uh, the required parking out here. Um, we're we're showing a, a dumpster for the uh, for the tenant use. Uh, these gray areas that you're seeing, uh, you know, surrounding the parking lot, these are all the stormwater uh, management uh, treatment areas. Uh, so those have modified slightly from that past approval, but they're you know, so they've only been kind of improved and and. Uh, it made more efficient from what we had before. Um, and as Art said, it is, it's a use that was, that was previously approved and we're trying to get it and trying to get the whole thing kickstarted again and get this, you know, get this lot, you know, active and, 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 you know, kind of a more productive piece of property than it's, it's kind of been stagnant for a while. So just trying to get it going again. If I could add a little bit to what uh, Neil uh, mentioned is uh, when we jumped into this and took a look at the existing building, uh, there are things that we tried to do with that ramp coming in so that we have a, um, we meet the FHA requirements and have an accessible type B unit um, there. It's it's kind of a funny split level entrance at the front. So it's very difficult to get into the, the units otherwise. And the other thing that we uh, have done in terms of uh, um, looking at the building was trying to bring it up to code in terms of what was done on the inside. There are some issues with the stairway that we've been able to solve and and a lot of other things like that that we're trying to trying to get it to where it needs to be. Does it is there a requirement? I know for like condos and multi-unit uh, fire breaks between units. Is there is there room in this building, or is the building already been designed with those fire breaks between the individual residences? Uh, each residence will have a half hour fire rating between them as, okay. as required by the code, and then the stairway because of the it's a three story building. That lower level qualifies technically as a basement. Okay. Um, so we're three levels plus a basement. Um, and that that creates a four-story stair. So we have a two-hour uh, stair wall okay. uh, between the apartment, uh, between the units and the stairway. Okay. Uh, and that was part of the challenge that we had to, had yep. to solve. Okay. Um, just one of the things that's a, you know, I've, I'm big on my hot button topics in the, in the town of Berwick is that because this is a major subdivision, if I'm not mistaken, um, the school superintendent does have to be notified as well and with a, um, and respond with a letter um, of the capacity, uh, their, their ability to, or their adequacy to uh, accommodate that 
And since we have so many major subdivisions in front of us over the next uh, month, it's really important that we let the school superintendent who is currently trying to get buildings built uh, know about uh, how many people we are bringing into our beautiful little town. Yeah, I, I will get a, get a hold of Audra and I'll, I'll have Thank her get you. a statement on that too. I know. Thank you. I'm sure I'll be talking that. to her multiple times a day. So. I, <laughs> I, you know, if you're working on any of our other major subdivisions, just get, a, <laughs> get all of them because I'm going to have you do it for all of them. Okay, um, sounds good. Jerry, <laughs> do you have any questions? Uh, since it is considered a four-story building, does it's that actually scare, three stories. Three story. Does does there have to be an area of refuge on any of the floors designated? Because of the sprinkler, uh, it does not. Okay. Okay. All right, Paul. No, I'm good. Mike. I'm good. I'm good. Nothing for me. Amber. You're on mute. Something's not happening. I have a feeling she's saying I'm good though. Can you hear me? <laughs> I can hear you. I don't have any questions. Thank you. Okay. All right. So um, I think you've heard enough from us. We'll see you back. Do a September 16th site walk. September 16th, we're doing a site walk. That's going to be a long night. <laughs> can we do the site walk at like, I mean, I'm sick that day. Yeah, me too. Um, I guess we'll do it at five. And should we do it at four thirty? I'm just saying, like, it's gonna, we're going to be here for a long time. I want to make sure everybody like eats before they come into our meeting. Yeah, we'll do 430. 430. I would like to do. All right, let's do four thirty just to make sure everybody eats. I'm a mom. We'll four thirty. So I'll, br I'll bring sandwiches. Neil, <laughs> bring sandwiches. Neil, thank you, Neil. <laughs> thank you. Panera bread sounds good. There you go. <laughs> All right, so okay. 16 at 4.30. Great. Thank you, Art. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Yep, thanks, Neil. You can leave. <laughs> um, next item on our agenda is the second... Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you in a couple weeks. The up. next um, item on our agenda is the second public Same comment thing. session open to anybody under the purview of the Berwick Planning Board. Seeing nobody come forward, I'm going to close the public comment session and move on to informational items. Yeah, so starting uh, Monday, I'm going to be the town manager of Berwick. Woo. Um, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, you folks are an awesome planning board. Um, I think you've learned very quickly. And my first task will be hiring, trying to hire a new uh, planner. Uh, we're looking at possibly hiring a part time planner that will work with Southern Maine Planning Development Commission. So you have Lee J from SMPDC. He's very familiar with Berwick. He's awesome to work with. Um, and he'll be here in October. Um, so I'll be here for September and I'm not going away, obviously. I'm just going <laughs> up one floor. Um, but if you guys need anything for support, um, don't hesitate to, to reach out. Um, it'll, it'll be a slow transition. I want to make, I was talking with Lee J and Paul at SMPDC about making sure that anything that's ongoing Try to close out those loops. So I might be at planning board through October until Lee J is taking on new applications. Yep. Yeah, um, that makes sense. But yeah. Um, cool. Thank well, you all. We're all very proud of you. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. I remember when you were just like the assistant. <laughs> just I remember when you were just the inversion, Envision Berwick dude. An idealistic downtown. <laughs> look at you now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Climbing the corporate ladder. Uh, anybody else have anything? <laughs> No, uh, seeing as nobody else come forward with information, I am looking for a motion to adjourn. If there are no further issues for consideration from the depths of the Berwick Town Hall and the esteemed Burgess meeting room, I would like to make a motion to adjourn. All right. Thanks. Second. All right, so moved.